Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Uh, today we are answering your questions. So we just put a video up on uh, the balls of face uh, and the questions are streaming in fast. We're not going to be able to answer all of them because there's just so many of them, but we're going to try and get through as many as we can. Sydney gonna, traffic, man. This yeah, is we're going to take you with us. Take you with us on a little uh, the average morning in Sydney. Sydney traffic is next level. Uh, next level in a bad way, that is. So we're not really moving much. Martin, these questions are coming in so fast. So I'm just going to start getting. I'm just going to start going through them. Cody Johnson, when are you guys going to build a rotary, a badass one? I know one of yous. Oh no, I know one of you has to like them enough to play with them. We both like them. Both That's like going to happen, isn't it? Mm. It really is. I got lent one a few weeks ago um, by the the kind gentleman at Haltech um, when they were fixing some Supergram things, and um, I loved it. Man. Like I was sending you photos of it and stuff. Yeah. Like it was kind of that little weird thing when you get a new car and you're all excited you about it. So hard on it. I really did. You were full Bieber they're rotary just, on they're it. They're just they are awesome. Yes, they are awesome. Um, don't know much about them, so kind of want to learn. So it may take you with us when we do do that. Yeah. Mm. Might be for a little while. Michael Oxtoby. Uh, when are you next in the UK? Um, possibly next year. Yeah. Possibly 2016. Um, can you sign the carpet in my car? Gary Decat Evans, will you guys buy a diesel and mod it for us? Smoke pokers. Stay Smoke pokers? <laughs> what? Stay posted, Gary. There's some cool stuff coming up. Uh, what kind of video are you guys doing with Roadkill? That's true. That's happening. 2016. 2016. Next year. It's going to be a big year. Would you guys ever work on or buy an Evo or a Skyline? Say my name in the video. Say my Stuart. name. Say my name. Stuart Reynolds. Say my name, Stuart Reynolds. Yes, is the answer to all your questions. Anthony Smith, well, since you're going back to your roots with the Mini, which I absolutely love, Good. are you going to do another dirty mod car like the TRD Laser or Civic <laughs> again? <laughs> Anthony Smith, you know what's going down, my friend. You know love what's going stuff, down. Man. That is so much fun. That seriously is so much fun. When are you guys going to grab a plane and come down to Malta? Do you know how many fans we've got in Malta? That's up to Malta, my friends. Yeah, we've got lots. And that's, a, that's not a big place. Heaps. we get so many so many people from Malta. I um, cars, so I want to go. <laughs> I want to go one day. He says, I recommend coming October the 4th. <laughs> that's like in a week's time. <laughs> Biggest yearly car show on the island. Please take some videos mm -hmm. um, or some photos. That'd be awesome. What inspired you both to create Mighty Car Mods? Here's the quick version. Marty wanted to start a blog called Clean and Green Car about little cars that were good for the environment. Mm. Economical. I didn't like fast. little cars. When I had my 180SX, I smashed every fall in a Civic and other crappy little car. I didn't like them. I have no respect for them, actually. Mm. Really? Sometimes, was, I, was, sometimes I still don't. But then sometimes I do. But, but I kind of get it. I, it's because I bought a micro. Like, I went from a twin turbo Subaru Legacy. And it wasn't like the fuel crisis, but... You were cool then, I remember that. Yeah, it wasn't like the fuel crisis, but it was like the financial crisis in a personal way, because I had no money. And those cars are stupid expensive. So, not only did I have to learn how to fix cars, I decided that a small car would solve a lot of those problems. Cheap to buy, cheap to run, cheap to own. Yeah. And um, But I wanted to, like, you know, do some stuff. And preceding that, I was off my chops in Africa. Um, in Morocco, actually, full fevered, all like I was, I was just, I was off my face. Needed serious medical intervention, but I had a a a, a, mara a dream while I was there, a dream of owning a Jeep, a nightmare, a nightmare actually. So I just, I was fixated on it, and I, I got out of hospital, had to go to hospital in London, got back to Australia, got out of hospital here, and just went and bought a Jeep. That lasted six weeks. That was the worst <laughs> car I've ever owned. Literally the worst car I've ever owned. But because it was so bad. Um, I went from that to the little uh, red Daihatsu QRA slash Mira, depending on what you call them. Um, and it needed to be fixed up. Marty uh, had the skills. And that's how Mighty Car Mods began. Uh, does Supergramps skid good? Does Supergramps skid good? You know what? Supergramps skids amazingly well. And I found this out at a skid pan I went to a few weeks ago. Just What's for... a skid pan? Our international viewers just asked me. Oh, a skid pan's like a, they call them motor carners sometimes, but it's on like a massive open. Uh, concrete track that's all watered down and permanently wet uh, and yeah really really good fun um, I didn't we didn't film it or anything it was just literally to learn how to drive better and to like test the car out and the car performed brilliantly and there is an article about it on our website so if you want to read about it maybe we can because this is not our normal 
kind of video, Martin. We can break our rules and we'll put a link down below. We'll actually uh, mention the description. All right. Oh, in the description? Yeah, we'll put a link down there so people can have a look. Yep. Um, power and madness aside, in what car have you had your best driving experience in the years of MCM? Loving the work. Keep it up, guys. Stay mad. Jordan. That's from Jordan Crowden. I'm going to answer first, Martin. I was going to say my S13 Silvia before it got destroyed in a fire, but... He's asked specifically what car have you had your best driving experience in the years of Mighty Car Mods. I'm going to count to three and then you're going to name the car that you've had the best experience in in Mighty Car Mods, okay? Yep. All right. One, two, three. Key Ford to the Falcon. City Mirror. What? What? The Mirror and Key to the City we were oh. drifting. Oh, man. That was pretty cool. Oh, good. Um, but yeah, actually, you know, I completely agree. That oh, was so much fun. The Ford Falcon, yeah. episode five and six of Lender Ride, Australia. That was just from a junkyard, we painted it black, put flannies on, went and did donuts in the middle of yeah, the country. Yeah, that, that, those skids in that massive big pile of dust. It was so good, that and that car, good. like, you know, that was unlike being crashed or destroyed, we actually donated that car to the Indigenous Women's uh, softball team um, out in Kadajuda National Park. Um, they needed a car, and so when we were finished with it, we donated it to the local Aboriginal community there. So that car had a, a good story. Um, all jokes aside, does Moog actually eat meat or not? That's from Kevin W. Lalonde. I love that this is an important question. <laughs> well, it's, people have thumbed it up. Um, you know what? I was I grew up a vegetarian um, and was a vegetarian for a long time. In 2010, I began something that I called the 2010 Meat Odyssey, and I started trying some meats for the first time because uh, it's got iron in it and other things. And also, I was over in Japan and. Uh, it was during Turbos and Temples, I was offered a spicy sausage. Oh, I um, remember that. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of vegetarian, I shouldn't eat it. But then I realised if I didn't eat it, because I was kind of, oh, I'm vegetarian and that's how I was brought up, then I was going to miss out on this massive cultural experience because food is really important to different cultures for different reasons. And so I thought, you know what, I am not going to say no to all these worldly experiences just so that I can say that I'm vegetarian. So I started eating some meat. So now I don't say I'm a vegetarian, but I don't really eat meat. Like I've never eaten a Big Mac. I don't know what it tastes like. Um, maybe one day. Um, Jack O'Donnell, who's winning in I Spy? Do you know what that means? We don't know what you mean, Jack. Oh, I know, I know what he means because oh. we're road tripping. Oh, all right, let's have a game. I spy with my little eye something beginning with H. Uh, Harrier Jet. Not a Holden Commodore. Oh. So I'm winning, Jack. Eric Hicks, are you ever going to buy an AE86 for mad mods? Maybe. Old, old school AE86. I like the idea. Old 80s car, rear wheel drive, front engine. Is this dude being rude before yeah, I read that out? out? Have you seen... I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. I'm not going to read it, Thomas Calvert. Sorry, man. I don't know if that's rude or not. Um, Derek Blacksma. Will it fit my Honda? Will it? Will it? Tom Rook. If you had unlimited amounts of cash, what car would you buy and what would you do to the... Or, oh, if you had unlimited amounts of cash, what car would you buy or... What would you do to the Mini or Super Grams? I'm going to answer for you, Martin, and you answer for me, okay? Yeah, all right. Cool? Yeah. If there was unlimited amounts of cash, Marty would actually own the car that he already owns <laughs> with a garage big enough to store it and all of its parts. Yes. Well, what answer. would I do with my Mini, Martin? Um, you would probably take your Mini across the world, drive it to its home via Japan, so its cultural home in the UK, and it's where it was actually imported to and sold originally, you would drive it that whole way. Yes. Or, <laughs> yes. I kind of want you to do that. Yeah, or just the same answer as you. Uh, garage You'd have a garage to, to put a mini and all the parts, and there'd be lots of parts because they'd break. Thanks, Tom Rook. Robert Hickety, do toilets actually swirl backwards in Australia? I've heard they do, but recently that was myth busted yeah, as well. Yeah, that got myth busted. Um, so, I'm not sure. Uh, Otman HZ, would you ever mod a Honda Accord? No. You know what? One I'm of the just nicest. No. One of the nicest. Marty loves them though. No, one of the nicest stock cars I've ever driven was a Honda Accord, an old like early '90s one. It was so good, man. Yeah. Just it was just worked. Like, but the problem was you didn't need to do anything to it. it that, I mean, really that's the thing with Honda. It's like, and I said that when I had that dream about the S2000. You can just get in and go. They yeah. don't respond to mods as well as other cars. But if you're not going to modify it, and 99.9% .9 of the population unfortunately aren't going to. Yeah. Then like, I got out of that Accord and then got back in my crusty old Gemini. But the Gemini was like, oh, I can do this and this and I can like make it better and it does skis and the Accord was just nice. And you've probably heard as well that God drives a Honda, but he never talked about it. Did he mention that? Jesus Who? never spoke of his own Accord. 
<laughs> wow. Um, okay. Lucas Petr Petrakovic, have you ever thought about vinyl wrapping wheels? Do you think it would work? Uh, I know it would work. I've seen it done. Uh, not something that I personally would probably do. You need a lot of vinyl to do it. Wheels get bashed up. And the other thing is, a lot of people, like, they say they've got alloy wheels. And it's true, they're made of alloy. But a lot of them are painted. <coughs> and so people spray alloy wheel cleaner, which is heavily alkaline on it, and it eats the paint. Mm, so yum. it's kind of like... Wheels get thrashed, wheels get covered in brake dust. I'm a fan of just like, paint the wheels up, stick something on that protects them and then clean them. That's yeah. my thing with wheels. Cool. Uh, Garen Stubby, will you supercharge Mod Max? Uh, no, uh, because there's other stuff happening over there. It's gonna be awesome, keep you posted. Jack Dobbo, how do you both meet? Uh, we were working together mm. at a school, mm. teaching music, mm. being mad. Mm. Um, mm. We didn't know each other liked cars until mm. we went down to the car park and I took Marty for a drive in my 180. After he cleaned his undies and I cleaned mine, which we won't speak about what happened. It was a driving incident, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> coming, coming in hot, as they say. Yes. Kevin David Cartagena. I'm thinking of swapping the engine from my Mazda 6 with the engine from the Mazda Speed 6 because of the turbocharger. Is there anything I should look out for keep in mind? Here's what I'm going to say, Martin. And Martin and I may have different opinions on this. I already know what you're going to say. Oh, do you? Yeah. Let, tell the people, Martin. No, you go. No, no. No, I'm interested You're going to gonna say, and this is what a lot of people say about turbo swaps. Maybe you're not going to say it. But a lot of people say, sell the one you got, buy the turbo one. That's not what I was going to say, but continue. Oh, that's No, 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 there's good. Is it? Yeah. Well, you're you're say? close. Really? You were going to say, if you've got the money and the time, it's worth educating yourself to do it yourself, but it's going to be a lot of work and you're going to need someone who knows more than you to be your guide. That's also a good point, which the internet can be, because if people have done it before, this is, this is changing a bit because of the whole, like, forums slowing down as people may have noticed but um, you might find someone's already done it but you really want a half cut if you're going to be changing a big engine and it's like a totally different thing unless you know the wiring is the same and you can just plug it in ECU, you plug in the internet away you go um, that can potentially be a lot of work if you've got a half cut you know you've got everything you need that's my short answer what I was going to say is that there's a whole lot more to a turbocharged car than a turbocharger yeah. and so in our video how to turbocharge your car in five minutes it's a good one to check out we'll put a link in or whatever it covers like ECU and plumbing and all that kind of stuff. You got fuel pumps um, and stuff as well. Yeah, but you but you also I think you want to like make sure that your suspension, brakes and other aspects of the car that are related to your safety are rated to handle the performance of your mad choo choo noises. Mm. Nuno Sarik, how bad does the car smell from all the kebabs you guys ate and are now discharged? <laughs> That's just great, man. That's great. It's, it's early morning. It's early you morning. Done you, did not, yet. you did not kebab in the morning <laughs> unless you're still up from the last night. Ina Malone, when will you come to Ireland? The Irish Subaru Club, a Drivers Club, will certainly entertain you. Iana, that's a really cool name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Apologies. We're definitely coming to Ireland. Mm. We've spoken about it. It is happening. We've had emails from heaps of hands. Have you been there before? No, I haven't. Have you? Yeah. Have you? It's brilliant. They got really cool. Can you do an Irish accent, Martin? No. Is it? But they got really good yes, sheep. You can. They got really friendly sheep. How how do you do an I, I, Irish accent? I'm not going to embarrass Irish myself. accent. I'm not going to embarrass myself. It's an Irish accent. Sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> Julian Schmidt, what happened to the 2JZ you mentioned in one of your videos at the end? <laughs> we, did we mention a 2JZ? I don't know. I don't know either. Next, <clears throat> Brett Thomas, do you guys reckon that flash tuning your car is a good way to get a little bit of extra power? Yes. Yeah. Just, that, um, that's the answer. Be aware that loading on random tunes that you download from the internet is not really the safest thing to do for your engine. <clears throat> but you'll have... Um, <clears throat> well said. Yes, you'll have... <clears throat> You'll have some people on forums trying to convince you otherwise because they're possibly trying to sell you stuff. That's true. <clears throat> Flash tuning on a dyno though could be money very well spent if you're with someone who knows what they're doing and can make sure it's tailored to your car. That would be my tip. Did if it we... on the Golf? Worked. Yes, exactly. Did it on the Forest and not only did we get more power, uh, fuel economy, because fuel economy is on Subarus. Oh Martin, look at Gramps go. Super. So good. Love those noses. Um, Flash tuning your car, short answer, yes, absolutely. Sam Harrison, when's the next Melbourne meet? We're actually meeting up with Beast this week, who's our Melbourne dude, uh, to organise it. It's yeah, happening. Super keen to get there. Um, Ricky, how did you become friends? We just liked each other, didn't we, Martin? Yeah, he's cool. We like snacks, he's yeah. alright. There he goes. Philip McDonald, hey guys, what part of the world did you enjoy visiting most and where would you like to go? Helsinki, love it. Loved Helsinki. Czech Republic, loved it. San Francisco, loved it. USA, heaps of awesome stuff over there. Switzerland, loved it. Japan, loved it. Indonesia's good too. Martin, what did you enjoy the most? Which part of the world? I would say 
from a culture shock point of view as far as like getting somewhere totally different yep. Japan yeah, yeah and also because uh, Japan it's, is it's because it's also awesome. the experiences we've had there we've been super lucky you know we've had lots of friendly people met them there and had adventures and also seeing the kind of real side of it yeah. rather than just seeing a hotel in a big city because I'm not really a fan of that like that's, that's cool to do for a day or two but that's not a holiday in my in yeah. my opinion some people kind of gauge you know a friendship and love and family and all these things it's like who makes you feel most at home who, who is it that like when you're with them you just feel most comfortable and using that gauge when I'm in Japan it's the only place in the world other than Australia that I kind of feel like I'm home I'm just yeah. I'm comfortable there I get that the people are beautiful and respectful and interesting and artistic and there's snacks philosophical everywhere. and spiritual they're just and there's snacks there's snacks everywhere uh, what is both your dream cars? We're going to count to three, Martin. I'm going to say your dream car. You say mine. Are okay. you ready? Wait, I'm going to say yours? Okay, yeah. here we go. One, two, three. Super Mini. grams. That's it. That's the answer. Yeah. Versaid Ortega Villa. What are your honest feelings about Hondas as cars and not the people who drive them? That's what journalists would call a loaded question. That is. What's my honest feeling about Hondas? You know what? I think if you're going to say what is your feeling about a Honda, you need to drive every Honda first mm. and you need to speak to the person who designed it and yep. you also need to know the cultural and political arena that the car was created for. Mm. And that is when you're going to know what a car's for because mm. it's like saying, what do you think of Nissans? Well, you have, you know, the S chassis Nissans and then you've got... I'm sure there's some other crappy Nissan around us as well, so you can't really throw them all together. But well, it's like the, one of those teetery things, that random the, overweight hatchback thing. The true measure of a car, and in fact, well, almost any expression, but the true measure of a car is how well it does what it was designed to do. And so true. when you look at Daihatsu QIs and everyone goes, they're crap, they're cheap, whatever. Those cars were designed to be a car that was for sale for 10,000 bucks. That in you Australia could park, the in the in the, you yeah. could park in the tiniest car spot ever that used no fuel. Because like, you know, in the early 80s and the late 70s with that fuel crisis, everybody was like, oh, all the four cylinder cars that came out then, they went from V8s to four cylinders and everyone cracked it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you couldn't buy enough petrol to run your car. So yeah, yeah. of course they were gonna be slow. And it's the same thing with the Suez Canal crisis when you know in 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 Britain they go call let's let's make a mini and people are like yeah. oh they're small they're not V8 they're not whatever they were designed to be the opposite of that so it's hard to compare them so look what do I think of Hondas I think if you want to express yourself with a Honda I think go for it my experience with them they're good cars yeah. they can be fast um, they won't. don't respond to cheap mods easily like turbo cars can factory turbo cars yeah have way more potential. Um, cool. Um, I don't know where I'm up to, Martin. Keep rolling. How many is there? I, I don't There's know. Right? Will you ever do something similar to Pimp My Ride? Pick one lucky fan and mod their car the way you guys want. We kind of want people to mod their own cars. Yep. Yep. Alex Smith, Marty, do you like the 04 Impreza? Or as they say, don't they call it in England Impreza? Impreza. Like a pretzel? Anyway, do you like it, Martin? Uh, yeah, I do actually. I bought one for one of my family members. I like them that much. Um, they're good. I mean, everything from the bug eye onwards is a bit same until they kind of, you know, did a proper facelift with the with the 06. And then all the 09s when they started to look kind of, you know, wide body and cool like that. So, this is a good yeah. question. Next, Martin. Paul Mole. Who's the weirdest slash strangest person you've ever been in a car with and what happened? That's a really good question. Haven't had that one before. I need to think about that. I don't need to think about it. I, I'm shuddering at the thought of my answer. Okay. Shall I kick off while you think of it? Yeah, you kick off, yeah. In Australia, hitchhiking's illegal. <laughs> but when I owned my yellow Camira, I was driving along uh, Middle Dural, that big roundabout where there's a uh, Macca's now. And it's probably two in the morning. I was probably coming home from a gig at Windsor RSL or some dodgy place where I was working as a sound guy. Anyway, I don't even know if I've told you this story, man. No, I don't know that you have. Are we... Are we going to, are we buying ethanol? Yeah, yeah, you, we can still roll though. Can we? Yeah. Are we you gonna, I'm gonna, gonna hang in through the back window so I can still answer questions. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're gonna do this, man. Oh, this hose is not in use. Oh, no devastated. ethanol! There's I'm no so ethanol. devastated! This there's, is not happening. There's no ethanol. This is not happening. How are we gonna, wait No, on. They, dude, there's an ethanol one across the road. We're all good. Is there? <laughs> there's one directly across the road, but I have to try and turn around. Dude, that's, there's no that's ethanol. That's never happened. That's never happened. Oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get back to your questions, people. I have to take oh, a photo. No, on, wait, I'm Martin. Just, I'm just settle down for a second. No, I'm gonna get a photo of you with looking sad. 
No ethanol. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it's alright. There's one across the road. And we have to go because I've got no fuel. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I'm driving along in my car. It's middle of the night. Um, this woman comes running out into the middle of the street. She's got no shoes on. Her hair's everywhere. Makeup streaming down her face. Um, she, I mean, she was a fairly rough looking lady. She looked like Jeremy Clarkson in drag. <laughs> but she looked like she was in trouble. So, well, it's not really hitchhiking if you run in the middle of the road and go, ah! So I, I let her in the car and she sat in the back like I was a chauffeur. Taxi driver. Yeah. And then um, she said, I just need to go to Glenory, which was, you know, five or ten minutes away. So I go, oh, cool. You know, I'm going that way anyway. So I continue on. And then... <laughs> it wasn't sus at all, dude. But good. Anyway, I continue on. <clears throat> Get to Glenory shops and she's like, just keep going a bit, keep going a bit, keep going a bit. Um, soon we're in Wiseman's Ferry, so that's another 40 minutes away, and it's dark, and I can feel her just fiddling around in the back seat, but in going in a bag, and I can hear, and then we pull up to this driveway, this is full, like, country now, like, bush, no streetlights, no people, nothing, and we pull up to this dark driveway with mangled trees hanging over it, and it just disappears up to this dodgy fibro house, and I say, cool, you can just get out here, and then she says, can you drive up the driveway? And I say, no. And then she gets irate, really angry. And she goes, you have to! Get up the driveway! She's like kicking around in the back. Really? And I'm like, what's going on? And then she just whispers to me, my husband's waiting for us. Oh, what? Yes. <laughs> no. Point I said, Bail. you can get out of my Camira. Um, and so that's the weirdest, strangest experience. Oh, yeah, we got at the door. E85, Martin, you're winning. All right. Continue, right. I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna fuel. continue, you get ethanol. Martin, can you get me a mad snack? Yeah, I, I can definitely arrange that. Um, because we're gonna be on the road for a couple of hours, can you do like a, the healthy snack? If you've got a carrot, get a carrot. Uh, okay, carrots. I'll get you the healthy snack possible. Um, a carrot, some cashews. Um, do you want a, a sparkly bottle. water? And a sparkly water. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Martin. Um, all right, everyone, let me continue with this. Where are we up to? I just need my wallet. Yeah, man. Um, this just feels, this is like live, like real life now, isn't it? This is real life, We Mark. need fuel. Yeah, yeah. You can continue, I'll be Can you put that window up, because it's not... Oh, no, you're going to pop I'm in. I'm going to hang in. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, uh, do you... Oh, sorry, guys, I'm trying to see where we're up to. That's the weirdest person. Do you watch Trailer Park, boys? Don't know what that is, Skylar Partridge. Sorry. How many unicorn farts would it take you to be okay with supercharging a Japanese car? I've got no problem with that, Matthew Williams. Supercharging a Japanese car is a mad idea. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for popping in. When's the Mini getting a 2J swap? No, what produces more power, Martin? A turbo or a supercharger both the same size? Oh, it doesn't work that way. They people. make power in different places. They work, make power in different ways, too. It's all about efficiency. Um, what are the plans for the Mini, says Preston Williams. we got mad plans, man. We'll be keeping you posted. Um, all right. Um, where are we up to? I've never filled a car sticking my head back in like this. Fill it up while you bounce your head around, Martin. I'm um, staying earthed, everybody. Don't freak out. Sorry? I'm staying earthed. Oh, good, I Martin. I thought we about to get a whole bunch of comments about, oh, you've got to stay earthed when you're feeling it. I am. I saw Martin is earthed. All over it. Um, is Moog going to buy another Nissan? Uh, one day, I Moog so do, Dewey. Question for Moog. Why didn't you go back to the Sylvia life? I'm, I'm exploring all the fruits of the forest, my friend. <laughs> Colin Fells. What are the plans for the Mini? Everyone wants to know what's happening with the Mini. Um, it's, it's, it's good plans. It's going to be tasteful, though. Don't be scared. Craig Harms, why have you guys sworn off monster tuners like Supras and GTRs and FDs? Have we sworn off, Martin? Martin. What's that? Someone says, why have we sworn off monster tuners like Supras and GTRs? I know what they mean. Sorry? I know what they mean. Do they? I don't know what that means. That question relates to cars that the internet likes, like cars that people have used in Forza and stuff like that. All oh, right. Like, they're good cars, don't get me wrong. Did we swear off them? They're super tunable. We haven't sworn off them at all. No. But but why does he think that we've sworn off them? To sworn off them would would make it seem like we go, we're never doing a Supra or a I GTR. Think, I think... Or maybe because you haven't seen them yet, um, Craig, you think that we're not, like, but we are. No, I'm into it. I'm Dude, into 2Js it. are mad engines. Like, they're like expensive, six, though, as well, aren't they? They're expensive, they, you know? yeah, they are expensive. And also, it's like... It's a, it's a bit recipe book too. Well, they can be. Anyway, I'm going to get you snacks. Ah, uh, thanks, man. I'm going to. I had to reload this, and there's going to be more questions. There's 700 questions, man. Holy crap! 700. 
and I've just got to scroll through. Um, um, oh my gosh, I've, it's so many. Um, this one, I can't even read your name, man. Toby Cheese Zhong. If you guys were to do a full all-out stance car, what would you guys do to it? I think the question is... Uh, the answer's in the question, my friend. Would you guys do a video for the whole world to see? Every video, man. <laughs> um, when are you guys going to start making... This is Alex Sar Jr. When are you guys going to start making videos of car builds like the Civic Laser Daihatsu? Um, so, man, we've just been busy setting up a space. Uh, you may have read the post on our blog about our stuff getting stolen, um, getting kicked off the driveway, issues with council and police interactions and other things. Um, so, so we are we're trying to come up with a new solution, uh, which we have come up with, which is a shed that we're setting up. Um, but it's just taking time. We're trying to make everything ourselves as well. Um, and then doing real jobs. Mighty Mods is a spare time thing. It's a hobby, you know. So it's a um, it's a good thing about it and a bad thing about it. The good thing about it is it just means we do whatever we want. Um, it's not a job. We don't have a publisher, a network, a broadcaster telling us what to do. We just do whatever we want. And when it comes to making videos, uh, one of the questions we get is people saying, how do you choose what to do? We just do what excites us or what educates us. If it doesn't interest us, it's not fun and it doesn't educate us, it just it doesn't do it. And one of the reasons, you know, everyone's going, do a plasti dip. And it's like, for us, it's not that entertaining, not that educational. So, yeah, we just we just haven't done it. Um, will we one day have some MMM, Mighty Motorbike Mods? Um, you could be proud of working on a Honda. No offense, guys. I have a JDM Bros 400. That's Peter McTipiak. Um, absolutely. In fact, we kicked off Mighty Bike Mods a couple of years ago. We even shot some stuff. Um, but then we just realized that it wasn't something that was sustainable to do that and the car show. And we kind of just decided, you know, let's just keep bikes our fun thing that we do on the side. Um, you know, riding bikes. Hey, Martin. How you doing, man? The healthiest luck I could find you was a banana. I like a banana. Thank you, my friend. Uh, John Shingler. Will you come to any classic mini meets in the UK? Not that Moog has a mad little mini. What? 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 We'd love to meet you guys at an event one day. Don't know what you mean, John Shingler. You're a confusing dude, but I like you already. <laughs> Um, we're back on the road we're again. Back on the road again. Da, 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 da. Harry Stevens, would you guys ever buy and fix an older car like a 1969 Dodge Charger? Very specific. Um, or anything yeah, around my, that era? It's on my list of things to do. I 100% I want an old classic American car. A little bit hard to find in Australia, just yep. quietly. But we're going to do it. Um, what is your schedule for the next year? Will you be planning to come down to Tasmania? The car scene down here will surprise the unicorn farts out of you. Good on you, Nico Dallas. Um, I'm really keen to get back to Tasmania. Um, see my family. That's where they're from. Tasmania is a little like island on the bottom of Australia. I went to um, Tasmania a couple of years ago. I loved it. Took one of my Liberty wagons down there to a racetrack. I had a great time. Brilliant I, rides. I loved it too. You know what I did? There was a non-car related story. Is I found out from my dad where he grew up like as a little boy. And then I went down. Um, I found the house and I just randomly went and knocked on the door and said, Hey, you know. My dad used to live here, can I have a look around because I wanted to get some context of him when he was a little kid. Anyway, so what I did, which was so cool, is the people that were living there now, so this is, I don't know, 60 years ago or something, I rang my dad, put my dad on speakerphone, and then we walked around the house getting an audio tour from my dad as he told us. It's like, if you look to the left, you'll see this mark on the wall and a hole. This yeah, happened yeah. when this and this happened when that. That's and cool. What was cool about this particular house in Launceston was that my grandma, rest in peace, was the first person to have a washing machine. A Wash. machine that washed the dishes. Oh, so cool. it's kind of the equivalent of having, you know, whatever cool technology is these days. And so we went down to the room where that washing machine was and all the people from the street came over to look at this thing because you put your clothes in and it washes it for you. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see how far technology's come. And in a sense, we're kind of, we're at the pinnacle of, of technology just exponentially exploding. And when you hear stories like that, you know, that are, you know, from within our lifetime, it's amazing to think how far we've come. Yep. Um, uh, so, are we coming to Tassie? Yes, we are. And what's the schedule? The schedule, man, is just to get, you know, get videos out, do stuff that's interesting, big things and DIY things, you know, a bit of both. Um, speaking of DIY, Adam got shit. Can't read the, sorry, I can't read your last name, man. It's like, I really love the DIY videos, but I prefer the big videos that you do overseas. Will you ever just do big ones? <laughs> It's funny you say it because some people just prefer the DIY videos. Yeah, you cannot like, you cannot please everyone. So what we try and do is do please things, ourselves. Yeah, well, do things that are interesting and 
it's all about, it always was, and it continues to be, at least for me, um, about learning new things too. So I was whole... talking about that when you were paying for fuel. Oh, it's got to be fun and educational. Yeah. And other than that, if it's one of those things, and that's why we haven't done Plasti Dip. And that's why we don't, but that's also why we don't do the same videos, like just repeat them a few years later, because I was like, it was about learning it at the time, experiencing it, trying it out, testing it yeah. for ourselves. That's why the myth busting stuff's really fun. Yeah. Um, but there's no like, there's no mold. There isn't like a particular no. sort of recipe, is there? It's just doing what we kind of want to do. Yeah, it's a tricky thing though because I think it's you know it's, it's it's the same thing with bands and artists and actors. They kind of they they find their place and then they find the things that they like to do. And some people are like, oh, why don't you just go and do these things? And and um and all of the things that excited us about day one, cheap and crappy mods, are still the things that excite us now. But if you read the blog post on our website, it it, it does answer a lot of these questions of why things have changed but we've had these amazing opportunities and when someone says look we've got a turbo expert we've got a tuning guy we've got a workshop do you guys want to come and do a project it's really hard to say no we're going to do an episode on how to wash a wheel you know when that stuff is still interesting and we want to do it but when there's these opportunities coming in we're just taking them because you know it's like who knows when this will end you know yeah. we got we got we got to we got to take the take the lollipop while the shop is open yeah. and letting us lick it <laughs> something that's good um uh do you guys have any interest in doing builds with a truck or a jeep this is jake reeves i've got a 97 cherokee sport with a three inch lift kit and 32s trucks are not trucks and also trucks in australia are a different thing to what they are in america um aren't they like i think they call trucks utes well no, yeah the other way around you know also I mean? they're, they're utes they call biscuits utes. scones they're confused no they call cookies wait Biscuits. No, a scone is but we a scone they call a biscuit in America. And a biscuit I got on a plane. You can oh, get with chicken in it. You can like go oh, and chicken buy, biscuit. buy chicken. Is it a biscuit? Uh, I it was on a there. train once um, in the states, going from some place to another place, um, and they had scones, and I said, "Can I have a scone?" And, oh, that's a biscuit. They laughed at me. I would never laugh at someone if they didn't understand something in my country. Maybe I would. Rohit Papali, will you guys consider a superbike engine in the mini? They're pretty awesome. I wouldn't do it. You kind of have to hack them up. You have to hack them up a bit too. Yeah, you, I don't think you want to do that with a really nice mini. Yeah, I, you do it with like a just for fun doing skids and stuff for sure. Um, Kyle Russell Kissman, this is just for you, Martin. So Marty, do you have any plans to come to visit Michigan in the USA? My family has a mad Subaru. <laughs> I have a Ford, and my brother has a Toyota truck. This one's just for Marty, and his name's Kissman. He wants to know if you're going to his house. Are you going to Michigan? I will go to Michigan one day. Kyle Kissman? I do want to go to Michigan actually. I've never seen that part of America. I've seen the east and the west and the north and stuff, but I've never actually um yeah. Yeah been through that kind of middle bit. Brian Rustin, what about profiling people's cars? That'd be cool, a lot of cool cars. Um yeah, we thought about that. Um yeah, yeah stay posted on that one man. We got some things we're thinking about that. Daniel Edgardo Rodriguez Martinez. Cool name. Do you guys think a PT Cruiser Turbo could be a part of the MCM universe? You know what, man? <clears throat> if you like your car, you are already part of the MCM universe. <clears throat> and if you can appreciate that other people have different ideas of what's cool and what's not cool, you're already part of the universe. I do like people that do, that do their own thing. I have a bit of respect for that too. Because like I was saying before about the monster cars, whatever they call them, like... Super, what, what I will say, sorry to cut you off my throat, you could change those monster tuners to supercars. Look at this fool! Wow, that was Ford like... Ford gear. Almost needed a respray. What an absolute fool. Almost took us out. Who buys a champagne coloured car by choice? A sorry. lot of people do. It was a rhetorical question. Huh. A champagne coloured four wheel drive? Come on, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's not cool, is it? Give me some backup on that one. <laughs> Uh, oh wow, hear the horns? Uh, we're in a school zone and they're now speeding through a school zone and Which is the biggest crime of them all on the road And also took 40 kilometers an hour in school zone Almost took two people out in the space of 50 meters Unbelievable Sydney traffic um, Supercars, that's why we're not massive fans of them A, they're expensive, they're exclusive And they kind of suggest that performance is, is, is directly proportional to the depth of your pocket I find that offensive on every level actually more so than just performance enjoyment yeah they think that they, well, they sell you the idea that you can only enjoy this automotive experience um if you can spend a lot of money and they're selling status so that you get this thing yeah. and now i'm better than this guy and there is a certain sense of superiority oh, i've got a ferrari and that means i'm better than this and i'm better than that i just i reject that I will, entirely i will say the one thing i i can sort of understand is that 
it's possible to make a crappy car, like a cheap crappy car, whatever, go like insanely this. fast, go yeah. insanely fast and do everything. But the same thing, it's, it's always, a lot of those exotic cars, they do manage to do everything well because they require crazy amounts of technology and, and parts and things yeah. to make it happen. I, I hear what you're saying, but I disagree. Do you? And Yeah, I do. And I, I disagree because when you say they do everything well, they don't carry trailers, they don't tow stuff, they're not at a price point that your average person well, can appreciate them. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, Disregarding the price, maybe. But, but the price is the only thing. It's yeah. the thing that's stopping everyone else from having it. So I, I understand what you're saying, but you know, we're two different human beings with two different ideas, so that's good, man. Two different, two different opinions. Um, Moog, do you think you'll keep the Mini or sell it in a year like you usually do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rough. John Higginson. Man, the Mini's staying forever. It's never going, ever. It's it's staying. It's, it's, like no, it's, my, a, it's a forever car. It is. It, it is my dream car. And you know what? When you say, like I usually do with the MCM cars, I'm I'm trying to find my way. I am I am I'm a sheep looking for a shepherd with a turbo in his backpack. Um, <laughs> like, like I'm I'm trying to try different things because I see I see people all the time like going Hondas are crap. Oh, which Honda did? Oh, I've never driven one. It's like what are you talking about? You're saying something's crap. You've never tried it. It's like saying a food is crap or saying a. It's it's just I just I believe in doing and knowing and then you kind of managing to speak from some education. It's Martin, not something you can do with higher cars either. Like you need to, in order to modify them, you kind of need to own them, which means you need the resources to get them in the first place. Yeah. And some of these cars, especially these monster cars, people are they're not cheap. No, they're not. They're mad though. Um, Simon Olsgaard. traffic. Will you do a Mitsubishi or a Toyota build? Yep. Yeah. Um, I love Mitsubishi's, man. Do you? Yeah, the ones I've driven. I don't know my Magnus. Sigmas. You know what stuff. my feeling is about Mitsubishi's, don't you? <laughs> you love them. No. Hate is a very, very strong word and one that I wouldn't use. But it is the feeling that I have towards a particular early 80s cult that really? sat next to my Sylvia while my Sylvia was on fire. Oh. A Mitsubishi cult was like three metres away, completely free of harm. A bushfire swept through. Man, you almost made me lose my banana. Sorry, man, I was getting away from that before with a champagne coloured car. Oh. Another Ford Gear! Yeah. Unbelievable! <laughs> if you own a Ford Gear, this would be entertaining. Please go and get a driving license. Can you just turn the camera around and not say anything and you can just like watch all the craziness. Wow, man. Dude, um, tell everyone a story. Um, I'm going to ask you a question while I go through all these questions because I've got to go through the list. There's just so many of them. Martin, I'd like to hear about what your favourite fruit is. Oh, my favourite fruit. Man, my favourite fruits are stone fruits. That was an easy answer. No, you know why? Because it's also in Australia anyway when it gets towards the end of the year and it's getting hot and summery and <coughs> Christmassy, which people from the Northern Hemisphere cannot understand the whole combination of heat plus Christmas. Yeah. Um, when it gets to that time of year and all you get all the nice like tasty stone fruits and everything's in season and it's like the weather's getting warmer and the day's getting longer and I kind of associate it all together. So I see that as a little like edible package of all yeah. the best things about that time of year. Yeah. I'm sorry if I've skipped anyone, but I've got to keep reloading the page, um, and so I don't. I'm just, I'm just kicking off again. Conrad Harwood, hardwood? No, not hardwood. Softwood. Hardwood. Sorry, no, it's there. Harwood. Oh. Um, that sounds like a porn star name, doesn't it? A little bit. Hardwood. Uh, it's, it's Harwood. Um, Conrad, would you ever consider building an Australian-built XR6 Turbo? I'm, I'm interested. I'm very interested. I'm very interested in those engines too. Yeah. Four liters, big turbos, pretty strong. Yep, I'm very keen. Richie Lecker, L-E-C-A. Richie Licker and Conrad Hardwood. <laughs> New film out this weekend. Uh, would you guys be doing another Stance Street cred build like the Golf? Uh, maybe, not like it because we've not done exactly it, but something same, different. Yeah. Um, Evan Poor with a umlaut. Would you guys model Lada? I would. Yep. I would, but I'd have to do something silly with it. Yeah, like stick an Evo engine in it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys do a Toyota build? It seems all I see is Nissan, Hondas, or Subarus. They didn't mention, I don't know, the Volkswagens or anything. Are they seen what they want to see? Or the, or the Cressida with the 1J swap. Yeah, um, this is, or the TRD laser. Uh, this is Corey Goose Higgins. Yeah, yeah, we will. Let's, let's get to it. You guys should come to Portland, Oregon. I've heard of Portland, Oregon. I've been to Portland, Oregon. Have you? Love it. It sounds like a beautiful place. It is a beautiful city, man. It is so good. They have nice trees. I saw some kick-ass music. They have nice trees. I drove down from Portland, Oregon, back down towards LA. Um, and, sorry, not LA, to 
California. Where where did I go? What's the name of the actual city? Los Angeles, isn't it? Um, dude, that's a mad forester over there. That is pretty cool. Oh, he's done the cool thing where you change your horns to the red horn so that everyone thinks you're mad. <laughs> yeah, I've done it, and Portland is a beautiful spot, and I would happily go back there again. Short answer. Um, Thomas Tepfler, do you guys like Mitsubishi or does the Subaru love come out too much? Meaning Subaru and Mitsubishi. Like I said, I just got a bad taste in my mouth because Mitsubishi laughed at my car when it died, but I don't have any problem with them. Um, Steve, who's our um, Japan translator guru, lovely guy, um, who helped us with turbos and temples and all the mad things we've done. Yeah, look at these fools. He's got an Evo. Which fools? That fool. Doing like 100 in a 70s zone now. Wow. Come on, dude. Skin donor. Yeah. Organ donor. Um, have you guys tried Forza Motorsport 6? No, never played it. You played it? I haven't. No. I don't have a new enough gamey thing. We're too busy making videos to play games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ronald Step Stepfler, what other YouTube channels do you guys watch and like? I don't watch any, man. I've got to be honest. Yeah. I, ha I Look, I'm going to confess something right now. When we got challenged to like, oh, you should do a thing with Roadkill, I had to go and like watch a video and see what it was all about. Mm. Um, so I don't... I don't I don't really watch any of them. There's, there's. I come across them. Uh, like if someone sends me That's something, I watch it. But I don't. I don't really like. Uh, yeah, there's stuff I don't. You subscribe to any? No, no, I'm not. I don't have any subscriptions. I'm too busy making the stuff and coming up with ideas and all that kind of thing. Um, do you know what? I, I like a. Um, oh, he's a really nice guy too. Um, What's he do? What stuff? Uh, he fixes cars. He doesn't modify them. He just fixes them. Eric the car guy. Eric the car guy. He's cool. Yeah. Have a look at that. Eric, that's... And I like that the roadkill dudes have a bit of fun. That I do like, not taking it too seriously. Yeah, I, I like... Because it's they're, supposed to be fun. Roadkill and Eric the car guy. Mm. That's a, they're, they're right. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, Brendan Cooper, are you going to be moving the steering wheel on the Mini? Absolutely, like this. <laughs> Can you even move it? That, I don't that know. doesn't sound safe. That steering wheel is off an MG. Oh, right. They just stick a different badge on it. They're going through the parts bin. Um, all right. Um, I'm going through. I did that one already. Um, can you guys do myth busting? This is Josh Barrett. Hello, Josh. Um, myth busting episode on things like an octane boost and other stuff. Kind of hard to myth bust an octane boost, I think, because it directly relates to your tune. <laughs> Chucking an octane boost into a factory car, especially one that's not performance to me doesn't make a huge amount of sense because you can only really take advantage of better fuel which is what an octane boost does he's tailgating so That's, hard that same i don't know man he goes up my butt before this is weird um really you have to tune for extra octane it's like this whole ethanol thing of you know should i use the 85 well no unless you're going to tune for it because it has a higher knock threshold which is what octane booster does so personally just chucking an octane booster by itself unless your car's already at the like the ragged edge sometimes cars from Japan have like, you know, different tunes in them because they're expecting better fuel and if you give it crappy fuel you can bring the Octane up with Octane Booster, um, but I just wouldn't personally use it. So, it might be something we can myth bust in the future. I don't like this road. Oh yeah, you haven't had a good experience on this one. Nah. No. Right here, Martin, this is where it happened. Yeah. Straight from here to the police station. Yeah. I was on my V-Star, it's like a big cruiser Yamaha thing, um, and um, yeah, got in some massive road rage guy slammed his brakes on I kind of it was it was the most epic road rage ever yeah um, he was an angry dude and he had kids in the car I don't know why people drive aggressively and all angry with kids that's crazy just chill driving's awesome you should enjoy it Rodney Lazarus can I use Moog's music on my own YouTube videos I have no problem with that at all man uh, go for it it's like as long as it's not like some video that you like some corporate video that you're trying to sell something people, yeah. you know it's like do your own thing one thing to note is that YouTube will automatically flag music if it registers them with iTunes but we will never do have take your stuff removed. taken down yeah, we're not going to remove it off YouTube because they send a message like going this person has stolen your music and um so you know what I will say as long as you've bought a legitimate copy of our website or iTunes what would be really cool is if in the description you go hey music by Moog or it's on screen or something that'd be awesome link it up do the right thing no matter whose music it is um, there's some more information about that there is an FAQ on our website which has a big thing about music on there and you're using it but yeah man if you buy a track I think it's, I think you should be able to that's what I reckon uh, Tyler Hanson what kind of horsepower are you guys looking out to get out of the mini um, it's not really what the Mini's about. None. None. I'm looking at none. It's going to make more, because we are going to. 
I don't want to know. And the reason I don't want to know is that I think a lot of people get fixated on the end result of being a number, and the number does not signify anything at all that relates to drivability, lovability. Yeah. Um, it's also hard fun. to relate. It also can be hard to relate through a video as well, because if you're not actually in the driving seat appreciating it, like an extra five horsepower or five kilowatts or whatever, can transform a car. Yes. But on a dyno sheet, you might just go, oh, it's only five kilowatts. But if that engine only ever had. 30, then five is massive increase, yeah, as, so. a, as a percentage relative to it. But I think it's like these days everybody wants surprising and crazy things on the internet, and that's why that's why that's why TV's on the down and internet's on the up because we have this amazing access to these incredible stories of people doing crazy stuff all over the place. But if you go, oh, here's my Daihatsu, whatever, and it had you know 30 horsepower, and now it's got 38. Everyone, oh, I saw a Daihatsu that had a V8 in it, and it had heaps more, and so yeah. straight away the directive of that video becomes about it not being good because it doesn't make as much power as something else. So for the Mini, it's a very like personal thing for me and I got happy stories to do with Minis and I got sad stories to do with Minis and like it's a quite an emotional project for me and it's not something that I'm like, I want this power, I'm just, I'm just not interested. That was actually a similar thing that happened with Supergrams too. So when we spun it up and we got 270 something kilowatts, whatever it was, um, there was quite a few comments of people saying, oh, that's low power. But when you, which was interesting, when you it? drive it as a streetcar, it's like it's fast. Well, what it's I'll also say about that, Muddy, is when you're out at the drags and we're, you're driving it, so you know, you pulled your 11s, and we've been to the drags a few times since. There was a guy that STI there um, who had around, I think it was 370 kilowatts. It's big power for an EJ, yeah. And he was pulling mid 12s, right? Yeah. And he hadn't been to the drags a lot, but if you straight away equate the power to the drag time, it doesn't work as simply as that because it's not taking into account weight and a whole lot of other factors. So, um, which is why, yeah, also like, there's also that conversation that's always going on about dyno numbers versus drag numbers and how they how they actually show the performance of a car. The, I was talking before about the skid pan. For me, that was the best proof that as a combination, the cars would kick ass because that's kind of the environment that a street car lives in, you know, quick yeah. zero to 100 and quick braking and stopping and turning and all that kind of stuff and yeah. how it grips. So I, I fell in love with the car more. I'm just like, this thing is so good. Yeah. And now we're cruising down the highway in it and full of stuff and doing a Q&A. That's awesome. Yeah, you know. I mean, my personal opinion, and you know, I know this won't be the most popular opinion, but my personal opinion is that dynos are awesome for scientifically testing and checking things to do with Tuning, your car and actually yeah. getting a, a visual result and actual data back. But I don't think it needs to be the way that we gauge how good a car is because then all we're doing is comparing a number and a number and it, that doesn't make a whole yeah, lot of sense. Yeah, you can have 2,000 horsepower cars that are absolutely terrible to drive. Um, but yeah. it's still a good achievement. 2,000 horsepower is incredible. Um, Angelo Lavinos, have you ever considered filming a car challenge showdown with fan vehicles that you guys select? Plus an MCM car, that's a good idea. Yeah, cool. we'll do that. Derek T. Hand, are there any videos floating around of you guys playing in a band together? No, I don't think no, so. I don't think any I don't think camera phones existed that then either. That well, wasn't that long ago. Kind of was. Fair call. <laughs> you and me rocking out at Three Wise Monkeys, 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's right. A whole bunch of drunk people and ladies ripping their things off in front of you. Taylor, Aaron, what car do you regret selling the most? Oh, he's got a lot of thumbs up on that. That was an RS4 wagon in police garb. Oh, was it? Yeah, it they got cool. a whole lot of supercars lately. They got a McLaren as well and Aston Martin. It looked really cool. Looks really cool till it pulls you over. Down there, look at that thing. That's epic. Uh, Man, what car do you regret selling the most? March Super Turbo. Yeah. That's the thing though, the time and place, it's like you can never go back. That's how it is with property. I should have never sold that place yeah. I had right at Point Piper in 1976. But if I, but see, if I hadn't sold that, Supergrounds wouldn't exist. And potentially a ton of Mighty Mods videos wouldn't exist. Like no, it's just, just the time. I can't think about it. I mean, what I was going to say is that, you know, it's not the one car that I really regret because I had to at the time, but my very first Mini, my first car, it's like a 1976 Mad Mini. It's like, if I had that, that I mean, that'd be rad, but I had to sell that to get the money to buy my Camaro, and that was a pile of rubbish. <laughs> Far out. So yeah, I regret that a bit. <laughs> um, David Friskin, would you guys ever consider doing a motorbike build? Um, you know, I've seen motorbikes parked in the background. We love motorbikes, we both ride them. Street bikes, dirt bikes, um, uh, yeah. I would say motorbikes are a lot simpler than cars in some ways, which means there's less scope for mods. And also, you can't stick your camera in your motorbike and talk about it. Yeah. That's one thing I noticed also. One day though, I'm yeah. definitely open to it. Um, the toilet swore backwards, we've done that, sorry Martin, I'm gonna keep going through. Martin, I'm gonna ask you now, 
what your favourite breakfast is. Oh, my favourite breakfast. Um, so, you can buy this breakfast cereal in Australia called... Oh, you Dick, eat Dick, don't you, for breakfast? Dick Smith. Yeah. yeah. Dick Smith's Bush Foods. So, yeah. I eat Dick Smith's, Dick's Bush Food, and it's it's awesome. And he donates, one of the reasons I like it, is he donates all the profits from all his food company to charity. Dick Smith's awesome. He's a legend, legend. Yeah, he, he also kicked off the... Was it National Geographic magazine in Australia? Is that... I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. But, but yeah. Um, just Mighty just a, for breakfast. Just I eat a, wheat mix. Just a cool guy. <laughs> um, Tom Rock. That's a cool name. If you had unlimited amounts of cash, what car would you buy? But did we do that already? Super Grams on the Mini. Yeah. No unlimited same, cash needed. Same kind of question. Luckily. Um, Brian Tolliver, how do you guys maintain your epic coolness? Is oh, it thanks, easy? man. Thanks, Brian. Is it easy or does it take serious focus and effort? I will tell you that there is a lot of focus and effort required to um, to make uh, videos. One mm. of the things that we've never wanted to do is kind of this vloggy thing. Lots, lots of people want us to do it and sometimes we do this kind of video, but it's This like, is as close as it gets, I think. Yeah, I, I kind of... In some ways, I'm really envious of those guys who do YouTube videos that are just, they hold a camera and they go, hey guys, today here I am and, mm. you know, I'm at the museum or I'm showing you how to do this makeup because they don't need lights or editing suites or to write music or anything but that said I'm really proud that we're doing something different but it's a, a lot of work and it's been eight years but um, I feel like we've only just begun yeah if we were doing karate I feel like we just got a yellow belt yeah like there's there's so much more to do and so far to go and it's um it's also enjoyable like making something that visually you can be really proud of and sonically like with kick-ass music and and making sure it all sounds good and looks good and stuff like that like that is also part of the um, part of the appeal because just holding a camera up or just doing these videos only um, it wouldn't be for me as fulfilling anyway yep. seeing like a good package like key to the city or chasing midnight or one of the you know kick ass big yeah. films like I'm really proud of how they look and and also just um some of the social experiments like with the golf yeah you know that's that's stuff that you can only convey that story really if you actually think about how you're filming it same with Lenders to Ride you know like that's a massive amount of work so yeah mm. and I'm gonna segue Marty into the next question because there's a guy here who's saying that you know I've got a YouTube channel and heaps of people um, leave comments on it saying my videos suck like how do you guys deal with that what I would say Ryan is that it's possible that your videos suck like in all seriousness it is possible that what you're saying or what you're doing it just is people, offensive yeah. or it doesn't appeal to them. That doesn't mean it's not valid though, but it means in that environment, it's just, it's not good. I think what you've got to do is you've got to kind of, we've had people in the past who have left criticism on the videos, such as like, when you guys left this dolly here and you craned up over the car, in the reflection of the car, I could see this or I could see that. And you kind of go, you know what? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Like we can do it better. Mm -hmm. And so criticism is not a bad thing. And it seems to have a negative connotation you know, in our contemporary kind of media environment that criticism is bad. The criticism can help you get better. If someone puts up a comment that goes, you suck, this is whatever, that doesn't actually help you. That doesn't help anyone. Yeah, your your video is nothing more than a mirror and it's reflecting back at that person things they like and what they don't like. An example of this, you see some guy standing over there with a set of golf clubs. If you love golf, you're like, look at that legend. If you hate golf, you're like, that guy's an idiot. But the guy with the golf clubs hasn't changed. So <laughs> your, your video is merely a reflection of different facets and fractions of your viewers perception and they're going to comment on that so remember that what they're saying is about them expressing not about what you're doing for starters but also you need to actually look and if you're seeing that all the comments of people saying this wasn't good or that wasn't right <coughs> maybe you need to fix it maybe you need to fact check it or you just go you know what I'm saying what I want I'm doing what I want and that's it so I don't know I wouldn't let the comments negative comments inspire you to either do or not do something that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. I need to cough, Martin. What's your favourite lunch? My favourite lunch? <coughs> um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build on your last point because I think that's an important one as well. Oh, thanks, Martin. Um, also, keep in mind that comments are not like... You'll probably notice on most of your videos, or maybe not, I don't know, that you might have 10,000 views and you might have 200 comments. So, only 200 of those people took, took the time to say what they want to say and maybe 10% of those people said that you suck so look at the grand scheme of things it's very easy to focus on that yeah but what you should be point. focusing on as well is kind of going did people enjoy it you know um, obviously if that many people are watching it and they're coming back for more then somebody out there is enjoying what you do and it's all about your motivation too man who are you doing it for if you're just doing it for other people to you know and that's it then maybe that's, that's maybe that's, that's not it. the right reasons if you're learning and enjoying it and you know getting something to adding something to your life then that's a better reason that is a really good point. And what I will say is the key word, that is the key word, 
motivation. What is your motivation for doing the video? <coughs> if your motivation for doing the video is getting really good comments from strangers and you're not getting really good comments from strangers, then fix it. If your motivation of doing a video is to explore whatever aspect of that life you're doing videos about, then who cares what everyone else says? You do your thing. Mm. So we just filled our GoPro. Yeah. Um, Sorry guys, no more space. Um, that's it. Um, I hope we answered uh, some of your questions. There was about a thousand of them before I deleted the post. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I hope we got through some of them for you guys. There was one other question, actually many questions asking a similar thing that I just thought I would answer and that is someone saying, do we uh, send merchandise to Greenland? We ship everywhere in the world. Um, all of that merch is, you know, comes out of a spare room at mum's place. So it, it's all like everything else that's DIY, you know, we, we don't have like some company or team of people doing the merch. It's all, you know, done from mum's place. And thanks to everybody who does support us by, by grabbing that stuff. It's cool seeing you represent. Love seeing the stickers on cars and like pictures of the key tags and stuff. Yeah, it's, really I, cool. it's so special, like particularly be overseas. Like I've been everywhere from Indonesia to New Caledonia to Hawaii and seen Mighty Mods shirts on people and stickers. It's really cool and <clears throat> it means a lot to us as well because as we've said a few times, you know, we don't have a broadcaster or a publisher or a manager. We don't have someone who's like out there pumping this stuff. Like it's it's just us doing it and our and our mates helping out. So thanks so much for supporting us. You can get the key tags, the t-shirts, you can download the music, all that stuff from MightyCarMods.com. Thanks so much for supporting us. The music you can get from iTunes. Um, that's it. That's thanks it. for watching. Um, some cool new videos are on the way. Uh, there's some epic, epic stuff coming up very, very soon. One of the biggest ever. One of the biggest ever. Everyone, I mean, that was one of the other questions, wasn't it, Martin? That down there, it's like, Mini got a, Moon got a Mini. Was there something else? That was an interesting question. Um, so, there it is. And of course, a lot of people we see on YouTube comments are like going, what's happening with this? What's happening with that? We're putting videos and updates on Facebook every single day. Well, there's not videos going up every day, but there's updates and photos going on every single day. Um, so if you want to keep posted with what's going on, then make sure you check out our Facebooks, facebook.com forward slash Mighty Car Mods. That's it, Martin. That's it. There it is. Thanks, everybody. Highway driving. Hal Tekken. Supergrams. <laughs> Bad. Let's hear it, Martin. Listen to the sizzle. Oh, I love it. Isn't that mad? Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Thanks heaps, guys. Take care, drive safe, be legends. Try some tofu, go do it. Let me know if you like it or not. Hard tofu, the soft silk and stuff's weird. Try some hard tofu, you like it. Bye.